The main battle tank, is it still needed? Tanks were originally designed as a solution to the problem of breaking through the trench defenses of World War I's Western Front. Although the rhomboid shape, male and female British tanks are the iconic World War I tanks, it was the Renault FT-13 that was the first truly modern tank with a 360 degree rotating turret, a fully tracked chassis, and enough armor to survive a hit from its own gun. And that turned out to be the magic mix. As time went on, tanks evolved into multi-rolled vehicles used in virtually every type of warfare. Today, these are epitomized by the main battle tank, or MBT. Like the FT-13, they're fully tracked vehicles that have a 360-degree rotating turret and are heavily enough armored to survive a hit from their own large-bore guns. But being as they are so important to combat operations, they also became the target of a wealth of new anti-tank technologies. There is no better example of this emphasis on anti-tank weaponry than the Fairchild A-10 Warthog, an airplane designed around a gun that was designed to kill tanks. Following right on the heels of the A-10 are the advances in anti-tank helicopters and anti-tank guided missiles, or ATGMs. This is an addition to all manner of smart ordnance that can be launched from armored fighting vehicles, artillery, and drones. Then there are the trusty, dusty, dumb anti-tank weapons, and finally, good old-fashioned IEDs. With so many things designed to kill the MBT, one is given to ask if they are still relevant on the modern battlefield. So, let's take a look at the pros and cons. Pros. Main battle tanks bring a well-protected, highly mobile big gun to the fight. They have a powerful psychological impact on the enemy. Having faced tanks as an infantryman in training, I can personally attest that they are terrifying to face. By contrast, they can help raise the spirits of the troops they are supporting. In a corollary to that, having tanks is a healthy deterrent to any neighboring country that might have, uh, shall we say, expansionist ideas. Although designed for the attack, they can be invaluable in the defense. Unlike the artillery, they are quick to respond to hot spots in the defensive lines where direct line-of-sight firepower is needed. Main battle tanks are still the best thing for fighting other main battle tanks, especially when supported by infantry. They are excellent ambush weapons. Most tank battles are won by the person who fires the first shot. A tank laying in ambush normally knocks out the enemy tank with a carefully, coolly calculated first shot, often getting off two or three rounds before the enemy can get off a first shot, which is usually uncoordinated and misses. Tanks have the advantage that they can fight in any weather, even when air support is unavailable. They can be there all the time, which means they can be there when you need them. Aircraft have only so much loiter time before they have to go back and refuel, but tanks can stay with the ground forces all the time. In a nutshell, it gives you what you need when you need it. Cons. Tanks are expensive to design, build, maintain, operate, and upgrade, and yes, they must be constantly upgraded to remain relevant on the battlefield. They're hard to transport and very expensive to airlift. The C5 and C17 can carry an M1 Abrams, but precious little else. Rollout ships were made for the job, but that requires a port somewhere near the fight. And of course, ships are much slower than airplanes. Tanks are bullet and bomb magnets. As mentioned before, a great deal of effort has gone into any tank technology and as soon as they show up on the battlefield, you will likely see just how much of an investment your enemy has made in anti-tank weapons. They need lots of maintenance and logistical support. Tanks are complex vehicles that have a lot of parts that wear out very quickly due to their size and weight. This means they are often in need of expensive maintenance. The tracks are still a vulnerability. This is one part of all track vehicles that has always been a bit of an Achilles heel. Tanks can take themselves out of the fight simply by taking a turn too fast, and even small landmines can detrack a tank. That will only keep the tank out of service until the crew can fix it, but war happens fast and the crew is vulnerable while doing repairs. 
Tanks have proven themselves of only limited use in modern urban warfare. In fact, they are actually quite vulnerable in urban areas, especially when not properly supported with infantry. So, on balance, the tank has lost much of its primacy to other technologies. But having said that, we must remember that if you face an enemy with tanks, especially in open field battle, you had better have your own tanks. Critics of the MBT often mention the highway of death in the first Gulf War, where air power eviscerated large columns. But that is a bad example. That was the world's best militaries fighting retreating and, quite frankly, third-rate military that was devoid of any real anti-aircraft capabilities. When fighting a near-peer foe that has a proper combined arm strategy with air, artillery, and infantry support, such easy kills would not be found. With over a half million main battle tanks of all types across the globe, and no less than 10 countries investing heavily in new ones, they are likely to remain relevant on the battlefield for the foreseeable future. Let us take a quick look at what is being used today. The United States still uses the battle-tested M1 Abrams series, which is continually being updated to remain quite relevant on the modern battlefield. The same goes for Germany's Leopard 2 and Great Britain's Challenger series of main battle tanks. France has its excellent Leclerc and Israel the impressive Merkava. South Korea has surprised everyone with its impressive K2 Black Panther, and even Hungary has gotten into the game with its respectable Alte MBT. Of course, China is making the apparently quite competent Type 99 based on Russian technology. Speaking of the Russians, some might say that they are actually leading the charge with their truly next generation T-14 Armada, which is famous for, amongst other things, having an unmanned turret and only a three-man crew, all of whom are cocooned in an interior armored citadel. Meanwhile, Russia is still making its quite adequate T-90. And then there is Japan, with their very impressive Type 10. This shows a commitment by all major powers to the main battle tank, and for good reason. Although there are many ways to destroy an MBT, the best way is with a better MBT. Artillery and aircraft are vital to success, and ATGMs can be quite effective. But as better defenses are devised for tanks, such as Israel's trophy system, these weapons become less effective. Also, in the chaos and confusion of a battlefield, accurate shooting can become problematic at best, especially in poor weather. The main battle tank is simply a weapon system like any other, and what the tank of the future may look like is anyone's guess. It may use an energy weapon like a railgun, it may have a composite non-metallic armor, it may be even operated robotically, a la Terminator, but for now, it will still be a relatively conventional tank. It has limits and advantages, but it must be used properly and with proper support to accomplish the mission. If you decide to go to war without one, then you had better hope the other guy does the same, or you are going to be at one hell of a disadvantage. Remember, weather grounds aircraft, artillery is indirect fire, armor fighting vehicles cannot take hits, infantry is vulnerable, and tanks move fast, hard, and violently. The best way to make sure you can fight tanks is to have tanks. It reminds me of the old joke about the Marine Corps rules of gunfighting. Rule number one, bring a gun. So in the final analysis, the answer is simple. Are main battle tanks still relevant? Yes, very much so.